A lesson learned in my life is it's usually me. <laughs> oh, oh, that's why it's not working. Operator mm-hmm. error is like always the first place to look. That's well, thanks for doing. Point. Thanks for doing this. Um, You're so welcome. So I wanted to do is have a conversation and record it. All right. And uh, the where I interview from is from looking from my clients' eyes, trying to see what they see, and where we are in the world at this moment is 160,000 deaths and growing at 1,000 a day. The fear of the unknown, uncertain, and the people I work with are frontline healthcare workers. Mm. So they're 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 in a level of denial, which is pretty great. Yes. Because they, if they had to really say, holy moly, this could be me, they mm-hmm. probably couldn't do what they do. And the, the but and having worked in hospice a bit for a couple of years, um, this whole thing around grief and grief recovery is starting to become, well, you, you people better figure this out. Yes. It's, it's And so... When I thought about that, I thought about who's the person I should go to to have a conversation about it, and there you were, because it's what you do. It is what I do. Yeah. So how do you, how's this changed your world from where you're coming from about having people move through an experience that they're usually unfamiliar with how to deal with? And you do that brilliantly. Thank you. So, <clears throat> this whole but how do you see this? What do you see happening out here from that perspective? I see that at long last, we're beginning to wake up from our grief phobia as a nation because we have been so afraid of grief. And now it's on our doorstep. And it was very ironic for me that when I first learned about COVID, it's a disease of the respiratory system. And in Chinese medicine, that's where grief lives, is in the lungs. So for me, it was like, oh my goodness, here we are. And about a month ago, I provided information for corporate employees because they were experiencing COVID fatigue, financial fear, and racial injustice all at once, that perfect storm. And I began by saying to them, where were you on Sunday, January 26th, 2020? It was the day that everyone on a Sunday got the news of Kobe Bryant's sudden death. And it was like a kick in the gut. And people had time that day to sit with that loss. But what happened with COVID is the people didn't recognize it as loss. And so this uncertainty that all of us were feeling through everyone into a state of confusion. And so what I offer people, the old way of looking at grief is grief is something we want to move through intellectually. There's got to be a way through this. And that's emotional resistance. And what I offer people is emotional embrace. And it's very interesting because I worked at shock trauma in Baltimore back in the late 80s and early 90s as a speech pathologist. 
So I know the intensity of that healthcare system. And then I had my own healthcare company in Nebraska where we served 20 um, rural nursing homes and four rural hospitals. And so I know that pace. And I know that so many of us are wired to care for others. But what I teach healthcare workers and people in corporate settings is to yes, go out to the other and shuttle back to ourselves. And when we learn to do this often enough, in a minute, we can reboot and reset because the body is a metaphor. And if you're standing there with a pain in your back, who or what is the pain? You know, I'm back to this pain. I'm back to this overwhelm, this COVID stuff. So for healthcare workers to be able to have those tools of awareness, connection with their body, and it's like even a sense of curiosity it shifts things for them. I'm going to move this conversation from there to over here, which is interesting. <clears throat> so the way I'm listening to what you're having to say is, is there's a particular way of being, a context, a something to be self-aware of. And in that capacity, you'll be more able to be with grief. That's yes. what I'm hearing. Yes, uh, but I'm listening from uh, the, um, on the field. Yes, because that's you know that's where the play is, mm -hmm. uh, and my folks are you know looking at you know at some within the year they're going to experience loss. It's it, it, it the multi the multipliers are just there for that. Mm -hmm. We're only six degrees away, right? So it's yes. like, oh, okay. And I already know people. I don't know people directly, directly, but you know, it's coming closer in my sphere as I can mm -hmm. see moving mm -hmm. forward. And then there's also my personal fear about it. Um, <clears throat> where should these guys start looking? Where should they start examining? Where, where on the field should they go here? to start to kind of be with this whole thing differently? The old way of looking at grief was we're broken by grief. Grief breaks us open, every single one of us. And it's my experience that that's what's happening to us on a global scale is we're all being broken open to a new level of consciousness and no one's excluded. So for people to start looking, right now grief is the enemy and I totally get it. We all know that pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. And there are so many of us, and that's why I wrote my book, is because I caused my own suffering because I didn't have tools and awareness. And so for people to start shifting their thinking, because it is coming. And so this loss that I'm going to experience puts me in this process of emotion. And we're pretty good at deflecting emotion in this country. It's fine to show up at a concert. It's fine to show up at uh, a sporting event. But basically, let's keep it all in a box. And so that's what we have to start realizing is that emotions are energy and they live in our body. <clears throat> it's going to be a leap for people to get what you just said as a conscious, valid, who I am statement. 
It's okay. going to be, there's a place where they're coming from that is not yet ready to hear that message clearly. Okay. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. That's okay. Uh, I heard it, it rang my bell. <laughs> okay. Because I'm, you know, that I'm sitting at a certain place in age and uh, experience and, you know, have been through certain aspects of it and have studied certain aspects of it. Um, but it, it feels more like there's a wave coming. And, you know, my job is to see the future before it happens. That's yes. okay. And that's what we're but, talking about right yeah, now. <laughs> but so, but they've never been wet before. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, yeah, okay. So I'm trying to move it down on the field, like, okay, what, what's the, what's the first reaction that they're going to have when they go, you know, whenever that is, it's like, uh-oh. Something's mm -hmm. different. It's a, They'll probably leave their body. Because what happens is, is that shock of the, even when we're intending to have someone die, the we're never ready happens to so many people. And what I'm experiencing right now is so many people absolutely they leave their body with this shock. And then they experience, and I want them to know that there's nothing wrong with them. Then they experience grief brain. And grief brain is, is really very, very similar to the addiction literature, 90 days in severe cases. As many of the healthcare workers have been, you know, so stretched to the max, it may last a year. And they're in that state of shock and confusion and numbness. So now are we getting to what will be helpful well, getting, to them? You're getting closer and closer to what okay. I'm trying to get to, but you're doing great. I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating the wisdom that is coming through out of all the years of being with it and seeing the it doesn't have to be that way it doesn't so no it's called transformation and the people that i work with that's what they do for a living they go transform something so that it is beneficial rather than uh, yes. being defeating you're doing Good. brilliant work thank you but there's an initial thing that happens. Number one is, is the, the, the death and dying is coming at them at a particular rate, and they think they have a bunch of defense circles out there, but it's coming closer and closer. There's a sense that, you know, um, mortality is near. It's, it's impending been. doom. <laughs> right, right. But living life into that, from the usual place that they come from is going to make life miserable for them. Mm -hmm. So there's something that precedes it happening that if we could have them go, oh, you know what? This... So what we're talking about is, is grief and they're going to experience it and you're changing how they look at grief. Mm -hmm. But there's something that happens before grief that's unrecognized as well. What is it that gives grief grief? It's like, okay, so I'm coming from a place. And I think if they can see that, that's what I'm working on. If they can see where they're coming from about <clears throat> what does grief mean to them okay. and has meant to them, then may, maybe I have a chance to shift it a bit. So, because it's going to be part of our world for a while. It is. So anticipatory grief is where so many of us are living now. Where grief is like the umbrella and anxiety, fatigue, sadness, despair, so many wide range, fear, anger, all of those are grief emotions. So for people to realize I'm not at 100% anymore. 
No, you're not. You're grieving. And there is nothing wrong with you. It's, it, it's interesting that this conversation is, we're beginning it in a way, I believe, that people are going to attend differently to it. It's like, oh, okay, I've never thought about grief as something that's going on that I didn't know I would, water to the fish. And it's like, well, oh, I, no wonder I feel this way, I'm grieving. Yes. And so that recognition is going to give them some capacity to see and look at it differently. It does. So, so my purpose of the call was exactly what we just did. It's like, oh, okay. I'm living into grief. Yes. And I don't even know it. I, have, I don't know that I don't know. That's right. I call it hidden grief. And I experience it myself. I, th I thought it was hysterical when after four weeks of waking up on Tuesday mornings in a state of despair, I recognized it was grief because the four Monday nights I had been on a call in a class unpacking whiteness, discovering race, or, you know, seeing race. That was the name of the class. And being the empath I am, and being a white old woman, what? I realized how privileged I was and how my lack of awareness had contributed to the injustice. And you know, excuse me, that moment of recognition, I yes. went to call responsibility. It's like, oh shit, I did that. Yeah, that's exactly I'm, right. Yeah, good for you. I woke up on, in January of 1995, paralyzed one morning. My brother died six months earlier. I knew I'd never grow old with him. But what happened was, is I just grieved a little bit and then taken care of everybody else. And then I was laid low by depression, calling for my attention. I find it universal, at least the people that I hang out with, is, is that when death occurs, they do ex pretty much what you have just said. They do a little bit of grief, enough to, an, enough to be satisfactory to a particular view that they think the family has. And then, then it hits them, it's, you know, because you can't walk away from that. No. These are extraordinary conversations you're doing. It's always good to talk about something that people uh, fear the most, which is well, their own end. Um, I'm getting closer to mine, you know, so I'm okay with this. I'm trying, I'm learning myself. I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to go out. 